we exist in love. You know, it's all, this is all love. Yeah. Um, and this is also love. And hey, I love you, man. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love you too, bro! What's going on, everybody? Uh, my name's Danny Ferrari. My name's Parker Ament. My name is Frank, a.k.a. Ranks. And this is The Excellent Show, and we have a very, very special guest. Very, actually kind of like, I'm, yeah, are you doing small claps? Yeah, just golf claps. Oh, golf claps. It's, it's claps. a build. It's, it's a build. It's a build up, okay? Oh, it's for me? Yeah, it's for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> San Holo is here. This is crazy for us, bro. I don't know if, if we didn't really talk too much beforehand, but we've definitely uh, been, like, studying your music for a long time as far as uh, <laughs> you know trying to didn't learn didn't you guys do you. a video ever about yes about yeah. my, my stuff yeah. yeah i think so yeah we remade yeah. uh light like, yeah 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 i saw yeah. that no yeah. way yeah. that's awesome that's awesome dude yeah. i've been listening to your music for a long long time well yeah that means a lot thank you so much yeah, yeah. bro cool. i mean you are definitely you know we'd like to give the intros a little bit of, of build up for for who's here and just like your accolades I mean, uh, you have collaborations with uh, What's So Not. You have a collaboration with uh, Rivers Cuomo, which I can't wait to talk to you about. Mm. That's so sick. sick. That's epic. Um, you have one of we would what well, I would consider an actual EDM classic, what we all consider an EDM classic as far as a song that will be around. Forever. 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 Um, and <laughs> we are so, so blessed and thankful for you to be here, man. We're so excited to talk to you. Already just like hanging out with you is already a good vibe. Uh, but we'd like to start our podcast off a little bit different. Mm -hmm. This is, um, you know, the excellent show. Uh, Parker and I are known as the Bad Boys' EDMs. I'm sure you've already heard that. You know. Yeah. yeah. He knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and obviously, Frank is definitely a, a bad boy. He's I'm got an tattoos. honorary bad boy. Yeah. You, yep. Yeah. You got... <laughs> You got. You're pretty tough. You're pretty up there. Oh, yeah. pretty you're pretty tough. up there. So yeah, we like okay. to give our guest a gift to open up. Okay. Okay. But since we're bad boys, we like danger. Okay. <laughs> we like danger. Yep. Don't remember we just talked about everything we're doing I'm here scared. is legal. I'm okay. Scared. But I told <laughs> all you, legal. Don't and don't judge it by its packaging. Okay. There is some thought put into it. Okay. So it's not it's not black tar heroin. I promise you. <laughs> but this is a gift. <laughs> what is this? Just I, there's yeah, only one way to find out. It's no, nothing, nothing flammable. No, no it's, not <laughs> it's not like a. It's not a. It's not like a gag gift. I it's, mean, it is, but it's. Does it have any any sharp edges? Yes, yes, <laughs> possibly. Okay. But, no, but you're safe to open it. Imagine if I just open it. And I oh my, my god! Hand imagine we. Oh my! <laughs> That's you might, the end you of might, the podcast. Cancel you my might, tour. Yeah. Oh no. Just ruin it. We, we, we get canceled on Twitter. Make me anxious. Let me open it, dude. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Hurt He's you. too deep. He's too deep into it now. Someone wrapped this really. Yeah, you want to in on the really tape. Carefully. I got excited, you guys. It might have been used to <laughs> murders. That's what it looks like. It's about ready to be thrown in a lake. <laughs> it actually does feel like very dangerous. It is dangerous. We're, we're, bad the, we're the bad they boys. Have to, they have to get dangerous gifts. It's their thing. It's like a thing we do. Everybody's you're, you're, got. I can see it in your eyes right now. You're yeah. scared. You're a little bit scared. <laughs> yeah, but I live on the fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we're pushing the limits. The fear um, fuels you at all times. I, got, I don't know who the, who wrapped this, but Parker, I feel like, what, you went in, you went in a little too hard on I that. I feel like this is gonna be the whole podcast. <laughs> 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 Should we time lapse this part? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna Probably. have to. We're gonna speed yeah. that up. How many layers does this have? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> what were you thinking, Parker? Dude, I was, you know, this, <laughs> is, a big, this is the it? big surprise. Yes, oh I put my tape God. on I, it, too. I still can't get... Oh, oh okay. 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 So it is a knife. It is oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> but, but it has flowers on it. Oh, hey, it's got tiny flowers on it. Right? Yep. Just like your song. Yep. Wow. Yep. This, is a, this is pretty... This is pretty dangerous, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so you can keep that and take it home with you, or you can leave it here like Phase One did and didn't even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whip it out, whip is, it out. This is such a bad boy gift. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> but it's also like pretty though, right? But can I use it for like peanut butter sandwiches and stuff? Absolutely. Oh, oh that's that's the number okay. one use for it. You can cut okay. your crusts off. I'm I, I'm getting anxious holding this. Yeah. Seriously. I've never really held one. Okay. First time for everything. Awesome. Okay, this is this is a bad boy gift. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell thank yeah. You, thank you so All right, much. I promise yeah. there'll be no more like scary surprises this like is, that. But I mean I, I don't think I can handle much more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it but is what do people use it for though? What box, what's the opening purpose? up boxes? Just everything. Yeah, okay. like Amazon Ooh. gifts okay. and you know. Okay, yeah. I could use that. Yeah, because I'm always 
going in with the scissors is mm-hmm. not really great. That's even oh, more that's dangerous. Gonna, that's, yeah, it's more dangerous. Yeah. It's not something that's that... going to work much better. Some people carry knives on their person, like, all the time, and I don't know who does that. Yeah, that's that. weird. So, anyway, we just like I'm just start... out here spreading love Yeah, with that's my why knife the flowers... Yeah. flowers <laughs> <are> like... <laughs> um... <laughs> We got to talk about so much stuff we have, um, you know, in our brains. <laughs> I've I never got it written a down. knife before. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, dude, this is great. On the knife. I was like, this is really happening. I just got a knife. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. When I woke up today, I did not expect I would get a knife. They didn't give you a knife on the Cymatics podcast, did they? That's right. <laughs> oh, no, they my didn't. God, this guy. <laughs> this guy. Um, okay, oh. so I think we want to, like, kind of get the conversation going with just some, like, current events. Yeah. Um, so one Sorry. of the things, you know, are you need a minute, bro? <laughs> I'm glad you think it's funny. Okay, I think. It's fun. <laughs> okay. It is always a little bit scary getting somebody a dangerous gift you just met for the first time. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're like, oh, wh- what podcast did yeah. I sign up for? Okay, I'm sorry. No more. No, no, you're no, good. You're good. You're good. It's, it's great. So we like to. We kind of thought we would we would start talking about um, you know some some current events to kind of get the ball rolling to kind of get your thoughts on stuff. Obviously, there's a lot of things we want to go into. We want to talk about your new album. We want to talk about your songwriting process. We want to go music production. You're going to open up Ableton, which is amazing. We're super Hell stoked yeah. for that. Very excited to see but, that. But uh, currently, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know much about the situation about the Electric Zoo situation. We yeah. want to talk about Electric Zoo. Have you ever played Electric Zoo? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think so. <laughs> nice. I, I got to Google so. this. I, but at some point. That's so dope. You wait, play so many shows. You I forget. <laughs> yeah, yes. right. That was, that's a nice problem to have. Yeah, I heard the word on the street was they canceled. Yeah, tell me what happened. So they canceled the first day. Okay. Uh, Why? Because of permits. They didn't even yeah. have the permits, yes. right? You have oh. played. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. I have played it. And uh, yeah, so they canceled the first day for permits, and then they oversold the show. And so the on the last day, they were refusing people to come in, which was insane. But, so it wasn't quite fire festival but they po- status. But they posted saying that the reason they had to cancel was because of supply chain is- issues for, like, the parts for the stage and stuff. But I, I heard that was also bullshit. Really? I, yeah. I saw the videos of people, people storming the gates. Storming the gates. Yeah. They were Crazy. storming the castle in Electric City? Yeah. yeah. It was insane. It's something I've I've seen a lot more lately, though. Like festivals, yeah. people just rushing the rushing. It was like hundreds scary. and hundreds of them. But yeah, it, it was, was like a it was three scary. minute video. People, yeah, it's like really, it's like not very plur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. What was the What was the last big show that you played like that? Electric Forest. Oh, Electric People were Forest. rushing the gates there. Oh no, 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 no a big no, show no, like no. it. The big show like uh, it. Yeah. I th- that, that was your question, right? Because yeah. Yeah. People don't rush the gates every festival. No, <laughs> no, no. Like, <laughs> that was a special uh, event. Yeah. yeah, that was a special. No, Electric Electric Forest, uh, and also Moonrise Festival in uh, in Baltimore. Um, yeah, really, really sick. Um, very grateful to yeah. be able to play those festivals. You played the most recent Electric Forest. Yeah, well, just passed. Yeah, yes. I, I, I hear. I've never been, but I hear that festival is unbelievable. You've never been? No. Oh, you. I think you should just go. Well, I'm waiting till I get to play. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's doing that move. I yeah. like it. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah. Just, but uh, for me, like walking around just in the forest, like it's a literal forest. Yeah, yeah. You can walk through like there's all kinds of um things are people do. I don't know what the what the it's like art installations. Yeah, and installations. Stuff? Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm Dutch, so sometimes. I know the object, but I don't know the word. Yeah. Right. Um, it happens sometimes. <laughs> Insulation. <laughs> Insulation. I'm English. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the word sometimes either. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were Italian. I am Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Italian. <laughs> American. Uh, for Electric Forest, did you play a DJ set? Like, what was your live show like? Yeah. So I, I have a couple of different setups. Uh, I have the DJ set, which is just me DJing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mostly dj my own music that's it's mostly my music or my record label music or uh just close homies music um but i keep it very i'm i would never play a dj set that's just like completely like random songs it's always kind of my my edits and my remixes um so people still get like this on holo experience mm. yeah yeah um and then i have the hybrid set which is me DJing, but also playing guitar and singing. Um, so, oh, wow. So I, it's like, uh, I did that at Electric Forest. I, I, I did a guitar. Um, that's like 10 parts in the set where I play guitar and like have a guitar solo and um, I'm singing on some songs. And then there's like the live show, which I'm going on tour um, 
I'm I'm, go I'm going on tour in three weeks or something from nice. now. Nice. And that's going to be like a whole live show with like an Ableton rig, um, like keyboards and synths. And oh, is it your epic. first time doing that? No, I, I did that um, when I released my first album, oh, album nice. one, five years ago. Wow. I did this, a similar thing, but this time it's going to be like a lot bigger and more instruments and more like synced visuals. And it's just going to be a whole, we even have like, like, this thing that falls down, like a scrim that falls down on the, oh, at shit. the start of the oh. show. Oh, that's like you're really. hiding behind it yeah, and then when the song like, starts. Oh, yeah. oh, I always like, wanted to do that. That's so that's sick. sick. Yeah. That reminds me of uh, the uh, Skrillex did that at, his, at that like crazy yeah, Red Rocks thing. I he had a Red giant Rocks, yeah. curtain and yeah. right when the song dropped, right when like the break, the breakdown for the first song drops, this giant curtain drops. That's it's such it's a so, simple visual. But it's so, it's so effective. Yeah. It's so cool. I'm going to have a couple like this is no one knows about this yet, but like it's it's gonna have a couple of of those scrims and projection scrims. Nice. And we're trying oh, to do wow. something special with that. Uh, so it's a whole whole production. Um, obviously, I can't do that everywhere. So sometimes right. a DJ set works, and sometimes the hybrid set works better, and sometimes we go all out on the live show. That's just depending on the venue and like what yeah, it can yeah, handle, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Some 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 a lot of these. Uh, EDM festivals just have like their setup with a DJ booth, you know. Right. Yeah. And I, I kind of need a different setup for that. So sometimes that's possible, sometimes it's not possible. But um, whatever I do, I always try to give people the like the son holo experience with my sounds and my emotions and my um, vibes. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a preference uh, as far as playing hybrid sets or DJ sets? Uh, it comes in in waves. I okay. I just did. This year, I did a lot of DJ sets. I, I went on a DJ set tour uh, earlier this year mm -hmm. where I, I played um, a lot of clubs and, and, and smaller venues, which was super cool because I got to see people really up close. You yeah. Know? Um, but after that tour, I was kind of, oh, man, I, I'm re I really can't wait to play guitar again. <laughs> yeah. And sing and like, and like like make music on yeah. stage. So, that's so you like being able to switch it up and... Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. That's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a full band playing with your uh, upcoming tour? So that that was the plan back um, back when the pandemic hit, like right before that the whole COVID thing started. I was uh, about to play Bill Graham with a full band. Wow! And we had one show at the festival the week before to try it out. And it was amazing, and everyone was like stoked for the big Bill Graham show. And then the day before, everything shut down. Wow. So, um, I, my plan is to first do this new live show, um, Existential Dance Music, for my new album. Yep. yep. Um, and then upgrade that show with like a, a band. Uh, maybe that's really awesome after. yeah have you noticed that there's like a there's there's there are like people that are just like i'm a producer i'm a dj i'm gonna play my set and then there are other like th there are a small few in the scene not saying one is better than other that actually do really try to like what you say is like create the son holo experience you know yeah it's like a feeling it's like a i love that yeah it's like a i, I don't know like otherwise i don't really i come from a very musical background i'm not saying one thing is good or one thing is sure. bad. I'm not here to judge any of yeah. that because I've seen amazing DJs, producers doing their own thing, mm -hmm. and I'm here for it. But I, I really want to. Uh, for me, it's really important to have like a, a fingerprint, you know, in in what you do. Yeah, yep. like your your own identity and your own sound. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like a completely different art, right? Even though you guys are using the same tools, like some DJs are just DJs and they go and play DJ set and they're playing a bunch of different artists, a bunch of different things. And then there's some DJs that that's just not their thing and they go and it needs to that need, everything they play needs to have a piece of them in it. Exactly. And and, yeah. and, and, and I'm so, more I'm more on that side. Yeah, exactly. I'm not throwing shade on DJs just doing no, yeah. I think there's a beauty in that too. That's um, I'm, I get excited about seeing a really good DJ play mm -hmm. all kinds of like mashups and I think that's awesome. Yeah, same. Um it's just another instrument. Exactly. The and CDJs then, are an instrument, or yeah, just like I a think, laptop is and a guitar. I think at the end, if the energy is tra transferred to the crowd, um, you know, it might not be my type of energy. Sure. But if there's energy, then that's good. You know. Right. Yeah. Um, if it's genuine and real, it's it's amazing. And I want, I want a different type of energy. I want. For me, it's not all about the drops yeah. all the time. It's more sometimes even, it's even more about the the parts in between. 
yeah. you know, the, the singing, the, the musical little uh, interludes, uh, you know. That's, a lot of people forget about that. I think yeah. that's super Dynamics. Huge. Yeah, <laughs> dynamics. Yeah, dynamics. Like yeah. when I DJ, I have ADD. <laughs> yeah. I have to go drop, 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 yeah, drop. That, I, but it's, it's more for me when I'm like DJing by myself. I just want to like, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but th- I, I love that. The thing is when you go see a DJ and you go, you, it's just build, drop, build, drop, build, drop, right? And it's that over and over again. Now the drops aren't special because it's drops the whole time. It's yeah. like It's like the heaviest, most crazy part of the set isn't that crazy anymore because you're plateauing at this red line. And it's like it's like you have to give a frame of reference. Like you got you need the peaks to enjoy the valleys, right? Yeah. Or you need the valleys to enjoy it, the though, peaks. Too. Yeah, it's a different. I mean, I, I know what you're saying, yeah, but there is just, a place for for just ranging. party music. It's like sometimes like hip hop music, like is just it's it's what you put on when you're like at a party. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's party music, and sometimes build drop, build drop, build drop, build drop, build drop, small washout. Break, build drop, build drop, build drop, build drop, <laughs> is also even though it's like I, I hear what you're saying, but it is it is a form of art in its own sort of way. Yeah, but absolutely. maybe it's not I as, um, you know. Maybe I appreciate the valleys very much as well. Yes, what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, I agree. yeah. No, I, I see. I see what you're saying. I think for me, what I'm really trying to say is that the drop. Um, I know we're in, in EDM, electronic dance music. I I have to say electronic dance music now because I also have existential dance music yep. of my own. <laughs> exactly. I love that you had. Yeah. I love, love that. This. I love that you made your own term. It's <laughs> yeah, so great. It's so yeah. sick. It's a great term. I feel like um, the it's the impact of a drop. You know, let's say you hear a drop coming, it's like, oh, this drop hits so hard. I feel like you can get the same type of reaction in a breakdown For sure. from like 100%. a melody part. You know, like that could hit. Just as just as hard. I listen to a lot of classical music, and sometimes I hear a classical music piece, and I'm like, "That's a banger," you know, like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Hard, yeah dude. You know. Well, I didn't yeah. know that you you were a big uh, classical music fan. Do you have any like uh, like favorites, or like do you yeah. like a lot of like current composers or anything like that? that you I'm can share I'm a with? sucker for uh, uh, Maurice Ravel and Debussy. Um, not Italian, sorry, French. <laughs> I'm a little French too. Claude. I'm also a little Nordic as well. You're a little bit French too. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. And Finnish. No, man. There's some songs. There's this song, Debussy song. It's called "The Girl with the Flaxen Hair." I I heard that for the first time. I think ten years ago, before I started Son Holo, mm-hmm. and I was laying on the floor and I heard that song, "Girl with the Flaxen Hair." Look it up if you're. Yeah, I'd the love girl to listen the, to it. It's and it's it's a short song. Uh, of or composition, I should say, and it just changed my life. And I think I still draw a lot of inspiration from from melodies mm-hmm. like that. Um, yeah, if you got the time, listen to it. You you you'll probably hear the. If you have a little bit of imagination, you'll probably hear how I how I get some of my melodies. Oh, cool. Oh, that's really that's cool. amazing. Yeah, that's I was so gonna sick. say on that. Um, back when I was like playing a lot of bands, because uh, similar to you, like I was, you know, like a guitar player and and started in that whole sort of scene before I got into electronic music. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I found that really helped me in coming up with melodies was I would just drive around and I would listen to classical music, just whatever, just orchestrated music, because there's so many melodies and counter melodies going on. And then what I would find was later when I started sat down to write on my guitar, it felt like I had more inspiration when it came to writing. Interesting. So I I mean, I don't know if it was like an osmosis. I don't even know if that's the right word, but like... Placebo? It it felt, it felt like... (laughs) That's a different thing. There is... As, as, and I'm, that's what you're referring to, like orchestral sort of music yeah. or classical music. There is something in it that I found just personally to jump onto what you're saying, that when I just listened to it just by itself and I didn't focus on anything else, and then when I sat down to play my guitar, it felt like my ideas were better or I yeah, had more... Opens, sp- yeah, it's, I feel like classical music is less structured in that way. It's less yeah. like, oh, drop, breakdown. It's, it's a story yeah. from front to back, you know? And that really opens up your, your, um, not just your mind, but just your whole, like uh, expression. Yeah, yeah, your heart, maybe. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah. Know? That I think makes it, a lot I of think sense. it also hires your IQ too, right? Makes you smart as fuck. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> Play for babies and yeah. pregnant uh, women. You guys are you know? so funny. It's just so <laughs> funny. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm European. Yeah. And the way she, I'm, I'm not 
judging you guys. No, yeah, the way you guys good. talk, like <laughs> it's so funny to me because there's there's a whole cultural thing. You know? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. There, there's a and it it's beautiful. There's been times where I where I entered America and I, the first thing I I thought was like oh everything is so American here. I don't know. I can. sure. But now I see the beauty of the difference. It's so like even even the way the way Americans talk. I'm starting to America. Americanize a little bit in my my accent. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know that Americans have way more twang. Just like talking like this, you know. <laughs> twang, bro. You we know, got twang. We got it. We got, got twang. Accent. And and because um, you you guys need to cut through all the noise of everyone talking because you guys <laughs> talk like you love, love to talk. You know, you yeah. Cut through that noise. Are you saying that I can't? <laughs> I can't cut through the noise with this voice, you know. Like, you gotta go yeah. like this. True, true. You know, and there's so, and uh, there's it fascinates me. And then I'm reading a book about ho- the whole like cultural dif- differences and how it also uh, shapes emotions that are different. Oh, that's interesting. Oh wow, yeah, the, like the the function of the way yeah, we communicate. Like, yeah, makes the way you, you guys say "I love you, love you, see ya." Mm-hmm. We would Dutch people don't say "love you" in that context. So if someone says "love you" to me, "love you, bye." I'm like, whoa. Really? Yeah, it's, a little too, it's a little too it's like, like, overstepping. It, it's like you, you don't say I love you to anyone else, but like almost like your partner or your close family. Yeah. You know, and here right. it's, it's and, and it doesn't mean that it's not genuine coming from. Sure. Sorry, I, I'm going on a no, whole. No, no, I'm, I'm, keep, I'm keep into it. Keep it, it, keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. It's so Please. interesting. The, it, it really inspires me to, to be here and because and, I've been here for like one year, but touring for like eight years and I'm start, I'm starting to feel part of the culture more of American culture and it, it does something to you because it's not just a language mm-hmm. it's a way of you know even the way you greet each other it's like hey what's up you know like <laughs> and in Holland it's just like a, what's up you know like that's it wow and it's, interesting so you're, I tell both of them I love them every time I yeah we, leave yeah, we say it all the time yeah and yeah. I think that's great because you know I sh- I want to do that too to my Dutch friend. I say, but it's in Dutch. It's like "ik hou van je." It's the it's the way of saying I love you. But even me saying that right now, imagine it saying it to my friends, "ik hou van je." When we just leave, it it feels weird. Wow. wow, wow! I think there's two different types of loves that that I think at least for Americans, I never I never knew that. So that's really cool uh, perspective coming from somebody that that comes from like another culture. But there's definitely two types of love. And when we say we like, I love you, bro. Like we mean that like, as in the sense of like, you are so important to me in my life, Mm -hmm. but I do not love you as much as I love my partner or my family. I would, (laughs) you know what I mean? So it's like, there's levels, but I love you more than just like, like, cause I don't say I love you to all my friends. Me neither. There is a, there is a certain context. There's a whole, there's a whole system there. Yeah. 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 And instead of, you know, where I think a lot of, other cultures would judge American culture of like saying that's fake. Sure. Oh, that's all. Oh, Americans are just fake. Because I don't know if you know that's a common thing. No. Like, like, yeah. like, <laughs> like people think, oh, know. like, especially California. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. especially LA. 100%. Oh, yeah. But there's just, a, there's a, there's more to it than that. There's a whole system and, and layered and like, it just fascinates me how, how culture shapes. Yeah. And there is also fake people though as well. That's it's not, it's not yes. completely it's not completely false. You so guys are just really good at expressing yourself freely. Really? Like, you know, even what you just said, like, oh you mean so much to me in my life. Like, you know, I and I and you're also really comfortable expressing that. Yeah. Um in a way. Is and it a masculine thing? Like no, like at all? No, I think I think coming from a Dutch culture where we have a very we 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 tend to want to be normal. Okay. Because that's what what what's kind of like your parents are like, just act normal, because mm. uh, you know, don't stand out too much. Huh. Definitely we different. love you, but you know. Interesting. Yeah. Be normal. Don't want to be part of the pack. Yeah. Like. Yeah. We we have, literally have a saying that's like be normal because you're already crazy enough. That's the wow. Kind of wow. And here in America, it's like, go crazy. You know, like like be be your authentic self because that you know sets you apart and like it's especially here. 
especially, yeah, especially, yeah. especially in LA. California. Because yeah. I, I, I grew up, I grew up in a very, very, very small town mm-hmm. at the tip of the North Fork of Long Island, New York, and it it was more similar to what you're saying. Right. Like, yeah. like it's a very like Fit it's in. a retirement. It's a re- a lot of people retire there. Everyone's very conservative, and it's like you have to do what everyone else. You know, yeah. it, it, it varies for sure. Oh, maybe that's why I'm in California. You know? Yeah, because 100%. I feel like and I still. I still carry that Dutchness with me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard to just like shake that off. It it it's part of, of my 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 uh, my culture. But uh, I I love it here because because of that reason. You can be or you can be absolutely just yourself and crazy about something. Like when I in Holland, when I'd say, "Yeah, I'm I'm a musician," I would always get this. Oh, oh cool but what's your real job <laughs> wow you know Damn. and here yeah. literally here it's like oh what's your what's your band let me can i can i find you online like i want to listen mm-hmm. to it's such that's a different, beautiful though. yeah it's, that's beautiful it's so beautiful yeah. yeah i'm very curious dude what how is it different culturally like collabing with people at home as opposed to collabing with like american musicians mm. is there a big difference since since we're i'm not a, i'm not the best collaborator okay i gotta say because Maybe maybe that's also your. Uh, I think there's a, a lot more collaboration happens here in America, because mm-hmm. uh, people are more just like, oh let, yeah, let's go, man, let's let's make something, let's go, you know, like yeah, and and I think uh, I'm not here to general generalize people, but I think maybe like Europeans might be a little bit more calculated and being like, oh, I, I want it to be like that, mm-hmm. you know, because I that's how I am. I want it to be like that uh, sound um, that you're, you, you're saying they maybe have a little bit harder of a time like relinquishing like creative control maybe yeah? maybe yeah it's a it's artistic a part- vision you have a specific vision and yeah maybe- but it's about letting go too yeah because i you know i'm and i'm not maybe i'll take it back i'm not sure if that's a american european thing but i do think in america a lot a lot more uh, collaboration happens sure i think it's also part of the you know maybe the, the 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 capitalist nature of America, just like mm. business relationships. Yeah. Oh, relationships are very important here. Yep. Totally. Like like, you know, I I noticed that like when I enter a meeting here in America, everyone's like presents himself like, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm John. I'm the co-founder of this and that, and like blah blah blah, and I did this and that and that, and I'm just like. Hey, I'm Son. I make music. <laughs> but I, yeah. I learned that I should I should be presenting myself like this. Hey, what's up? I'm I'm Son Holo. I I got I got um, a golden record. I I played the biggest festivals, uh, electronic music. Uh, I got 200 million streams on my song Light. That kind of works here. Like people celebrate the achievements and the goals. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, the achievements and the accomplishments. I feel I feel like presenting yourself that way only works if that if being that way is authentic to you, right? Like if you if you feel like you're you have to force yourself to act that way because that isn't you, then you yeah. uh, you shouldn't, right? There's a balance. Yeah. For I'm, sure. I'm not yeah. throwing shade on that. I think no, it's really fascinating because yeah. I I've, I've witnessed it and I yeah. and first I was like, whoa, interesting. I I don't really care about where you went to school and stuff, yeah. but I but now I see how that it's all culture it's it's mm-hmm. there's a reason why people are like that and it's, i think it's beautiful to to witness i kind of wanted to to jump back into some of the uh the questions about your uh about going back into your live performance stuff yep. if that's cool with you guys Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. I, I really wanted to uh parker told me this i didn't i don't know if this is true or not cuz you're here but uh are you're like kind of a gearhead right like you're really into like certain gear so like yeah, I love gear. So, like, what are you? What gear are you using live? Like, what is like? What's your like? What guitar are you playing? What oh. amps? What pedals? Like, how do you so, like? Yeah. How do you set that whole thing up for yeah. the Song Hollow experience? Guitars, just I can talk so you're about smiling already. Let's endlessly. go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I play a, a 1966 Fender Duo Sonic, Ooh, um, which is nice sounds fancy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that fancy actually. Uh, I bought them uh, before the pandemic, and they were like. Uh, Obviously, this is like a, a vintage guitar, 1966, yeah. built in 1966. Wow! So like, um, I love old guitars because, um, you, I, I actually own like five 1966 Fender Duo Sonics. 
Um, five, of five of them. Yeah. But, <laughs> You're definitely a gearhead. Yeah. <laughs> they all sound different. Of course. Oh yeah. And yeah. It's, some of them are the same, same configuration, same color. Mm -hmm. They all sound different. Yeah, that's and, amazing. And and I don't see that as often with newer guitars. They're more like factory produced, and they all kind of sound the same. Yep. But I plug those guitars in, and even my audio guy is like, oh, that sounds completely different. Same year, same brand, same same model. Yep. And I think that's why I love the old the old vintage stuff yeah. a lot. You can get some stuff from the 90s still, like at least with like my experience with like Gibson, like because I, th that, that Gibson out there is like from the 90s. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely a point in the like, like uh, mid 2000s where they just, I think they switched their manufacturing and it was, it's just, it, you could tell by just like the craftsmanship of it. They don't, it's more mass produced. Mm -hmm. It's more commercialized yeah. versus back in the day, uh, you know, when you, when you talk about these, these vintage guitars, yeah. they were, they, you know, they were most likely made by a person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, as a, a, and a person. I, I can go really deep on this. Like one of the biggest things is they used to. Uh, paint guitars with nitro cellulo cellu celluloids? cellulose cellulose yeah. yeah I can't pronounce that word I'm sorry it's no. very poisonous but yeah, yes you're good. Yeah. you nailed it it's poisonous yeah. Right? yeah so they weren't allowed to do it anymore right. at some point so they switched to poly synth yeah I can't pronounce the poly word polyurethane poly exactly thing, right? hey yeah. whoa we worked in guitars we, we yeah. Yeah. Up. yeah so but that is a really thick layer on yeah. the guitar yeah it doesn't you know, people liked it at first because it doesn't dent or scratch but that's the whole beauty of like an old guitar. Like it's scratch, it's it gets dense in mm -hmm. it, it, get, it fades. Yeah. It lives like like a human, you know? Like yeah. my, it's all beat up. My guitar's all beat up and like um it's a mess, but it's it Beautiful. kind of represents me <laughs> that way. <laughs> and they smell nitro smells really sweet too. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. If you have a I, like an old nitro guitar, like the or even if you get a new one, if you get a new one that still has been because some of them can I don't know actually since the last time I was selling guitars. But if you open up a brand new, oh like, yeah, spray, there's a certain candy I, my, smell to it. My it's like, the smell of my guitar is like it smells like like beer and and venues. <laughs> beer and right venues. Now. Like it's classic like, rock it star. Smells like it smells like a green room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So wait, it's it's poisonous. So you have to wash your hands after you no, touch it or no, something? No, no, or no, no, no before it, before it dries. Oh, before it dries. Yeah. 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 It's about spraying the paint on. It's 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 really bad. It's it is very poisonous to humans, but when they're making the guitars, it's it's the the process of spraying on the paint is very poisonous and it's also very bad for the atmosphere. So oh, only so certain, you're okay so to only, play it. Yeah, you're fine you to, to play it, hands. but it's no. definitely like what okay. he's saying is it's gonna it's wear like, ah! differently. I'm a drummer, dude. I don't yeah. know about guitars. Yeah. But okay. I mean, I I can go nuts with you on it because I I love this shit too. I love guitars and gear. So you're you're so basically your live setup. Are those uh, you said? The, I, 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 are those do those ones look like Jaguars? So those ones with the switches, like the Kurt Cobain bit, yeah, kind like of Mustangs, look? almost yeah. like Mustangs without the tremolo bar. Okay. So they're just hard tails. So whenever a string breaks, it doesn't like it doesn't go out of tune all the way. Oh, and if you have well, a tremolo, the, you break one string and the whole thing kind of uh, gets out of tune. So. And are you recording with those ones, or do you have other guitars too that you like to use for your no, when I, your production? I, my blue duo sonic i don't know maybe we can picture it yeah they but can it's like, yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's like right here <laughs> yeah that's like i i got that guitar off of reverb.com nice. and um it's just i've not found anything that sounds better it's wow. just it just sounds great and i use it on recordings touring i have other guitars too but but, but this that's my, your go -to. That's my main that's my go-to yeah and uh they, it goes through into a into a kemper amp which is like a digital yep. Uh, amp modeler one of the best Definitely. amp modelers i think um actually my friend um he he modeled his old princeton reverb because oh, with the kemper you can record an yeah. old amp and then it and it mimics that and yeah. it does a good job of it too. yeah, yeah it's a killer yeah. it's a killer machine yeah we got one right there the kemper yeah, yeah. oh great yeah. yeah yeah so shout out to paul davids and sylvan van der Zwaag for um sampling their their amp and i've been playing their amp for the last five years basically wow. just through the camper that's so cool um, are you bringing the camper uh with you live yeah you have, like, I, the rack? I bring two for nice. one one for a backup and then i have for this next upcoming live tour for the existential dance music album that drops this week nice. yeah, yeah. Baby. plugging it in there um um 
I have two laptops. One is just for like if something goes wrong, we hit a switch, it goes to the the other laptop. Nice. Um, then there's a lot of MIDI, uh, keyboard, sample samplers, uh, and then um, the Kemper goes through Ableton. So like I record my guitar through the Kemper, then the Kemper goes through Ableton, and then in the Ableton track. There's also volume autom automation that I added. So, like, I can, whenever a kick hits, it side chains the guitar. Oh, oh so that's like, sick. sick. You know, so it, I can, like, play and, I, and it goes like, yeah, yeah, almost yeah, like, a, like a, right, a side like chain. A, right. like, a, like, a, like a side chain. Like, a, you know, the typical, the typical future bass. Um, yeah. Side, LFO. Side chain, yeah. LFO. I can do that with a guitar now. That's so, so sick. Yeah. And it, 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 what, is that the. You're only able. It, you're doing that for the first time on this tour. Yes. That, that technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. that's gonna sound cool. Yeah. And and I also have some parts where I, I you know, like the I put the Ableton, um, auto pan like as a stutter, like yeah, eh, eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. Turn the phase I'm, all the way down and exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like I'm, I have some guitar solos that, that go through that effect. So oh, cool. it's like it sounds super synthy, but it's a guitar. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to. It's like an extreme tremolo. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and but really in time and it almost sounds like I also put some OTT on that there afterwards. You go. Nice, <laughs> that's yeah. killer. So nice. Like, <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so you're there, not really using a lot of like pedals anymore, right? You're just essentially Ableton. The, the, yeah, but Kemper has a lot of uh, has unlimited presets. So like mm -hmm. it yeah. switches the the presets per section of the song because uh, I'm all, also singing and running to the, the 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 keyboard and doing effects and beat repeats. Yeah, like, I can't also do the pedals yeah that's a lot man it's a lot do you guys ever think about how like there's a whole other section of ableton live that we don't even really yeah, fuck like, with? like the technical to, side of yeah. things yeah. yeah like the live set like i know i've done like a dj live set in ableton before but like just on that sort of thing how everybody uses it pretty much even if you're in a band if you're like an angels yep. and airwaves or something or blink 182 like those guys are Love that. have ableton Love angels and airwaves. Go, yeah. yeah they have ableton they have their guys running ableton so there's like a whole other learning thing of ableton that we basically suck at and i learned how to use it really i, w I went to dub spot before they fold you don't New York City. there's there's a whole other i'm telling you there's a whole like world the whole of, live thing yeah yeah, yeah. and it does lights too did you know yeah, that? Yeah, you can sync it with lights. Do you yeah. do any of that? Do you mess with any of that stuff? Um, like programming I've, the lights at all and, and getting all I've that done, stuff? I've, I've done that for my first album tour where it was MIDI. You can trigger MIDI with it, and then the MIDI triggers the lights, but I'm not sure if that's the same thing you're talking it's about. It's similar. I remember I was talking to the Ableton rep when I was working at Guitar Center. I was like, I'm ready to get certified, and he asked me one question about Ableton lighting. <laughs> And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, you are nowhere near <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. Because there's, there's, there, to be Ableton certified is like, from Ableton is well, like dude, a look big at you deal. Now. Look at you now. Still not certified. Don't, I don't need to be. <laughs> Still not certified. I'm doing music, right? Yeah. You're but doing, I'm just, doing great. I'm just, it's just great. funny because I always think about that when people, like the amount of effort you have to put into doing, especially if you're playing a real instrument, into just getting the Ableton set to sort of sync up with everything you know, with, and it's all creative too. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, help him out, Thank man. He's, so much. he's yeah, struggling right. over there. Swinging. He got the, he got the drooper. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, always there's one stand that's droopy. That's one stand that's does way it. better. Thank you so much. <laughs> he couldn't have But creating you your own sort of like way of creating a live set. You're in, yeah. in the San Holo way with, you know, with click tracks and all that. Like that shit's like, yeah. that's so, I, I got so complicated. I get help with that though. It's not just me doing that. Like yeah. I, 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 uh, um, team. You got a guy. I'm, I'm working with a guy, uh, Cooper from Beehive. Shout out uh, Coops. Wait. Shout out Cooper. Oh, okay. Not not Koopa Troopa. No. Okay. No, that's the that's the the Web three. Yeah, that's uh, my that's my, my boy. I that love my, I love Coop, yeah. yeah, I love Cooper. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah I just dude. I actually just did a podcast podcast with him. Uh, oh, nice. Cool. Talking about exactly the same stuff. No, just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give you a knife. I bet you that. I, yeah. I did not get a knife. But <laughs> but we j we did um, on the same day at night. Um, he he lives in a really nice house with a nice balcony and beautiful view and i was like i really want to record a new set so i recorded a slow motion set oh we were gonna ask we were you gonna about ask that you about yeah oh, we want to talk so about cool. that I, I i made the second one saw, with a crowd that's i saw what we heard. Uh, yeah. i saw videos on a story oh really yeah oh cool yeah. please yeah. explain it looked, it looked really cool how that okay. how does that even work it's like the the old like 2000s music videos like we don't even know the like, slow how motion would you perform set. it okay. so I'll, explain I'll yeah we need to i'm know. not gonna tell all the secrets but yeah <laughs> so the concept started back in the pandemic when 
um, you know, if, if all DJs were trying to do something cool for, yeah. for, to get eyes on them because, yeah. you know, the whole world shut down. Your DJs, you got to do something right. to get, you know, cut through all the sets that were being performed. So I was like, I know my, my friend Chet Porter did like an underwater set, you know, literally did an underwater oh, I set. Didn't know that. Yeah, I know it's crazy. He, he told me about that. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And um, I think for the same, I think it was like a, something, it was an event, uh, Mirage, something. Um, we, we uh, all, all kinds of, some people did sets in their cars, you know. Huh. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to do something weird. Like I'm going to do a slow motion set. Because, you know, those old videos where they, where they, I think it's still a common music video uh, mm -hmm. thing. They, they record it in double speed yep. and then slow down the tape, and right. then it, they're singing in real time, but they move like this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Um. So I was like, is that possible as a DJ set? So we, so we tried it. Smart. And it worked out. I, and so I DJed everything twice the speed. So. Wow. Wait. So the other night at the par at the party at Cooper's house for our crowd, you played everything. Crowd. Double yeah. Speed. How did that go? Exactly. Oh, man. Wow. I, that's I interesting. I explained. I was like, "Hey, this is gonna be a very interesting set, y'all. Thank you for coming. But this is like, treat this as a music video shoot, okay? So, cool. what you're gonna hear is literally, uh, like a house track normally sounds like, tss, tss, and this sounds like tss, 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 tss. <laughs> so fast. You're doing. It's uh, almost not danceable, but it, yeah. but people were so excited about the whole. Uh, process yeah. process and afterwards i played a normal set but oh there you go we we recorded um a 30 minute set which was for me performing only 15 minutes because it was doubled it. oh that's so great it, it just took 15 minutes and um people were just like dancing and like having fun it looks so good we're dropping it soon and i oh, can't wait to see it i can't wait to see but it. but it's too. really hard to dj double speed because i imagine you have to be ready quick. to go yeah but it's that's what i thought i thought i just got to be ready um, and I made some edits to make it easier, but because it's double the speed, the smallest, oh. the smallest bit of being off <gasps> is double. Yep. Oh, so oh my God. God. Yeah. So it, you're working with a sixteenth rather than like an eighth of, of error. Like basically. Like yeah. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and um, you got to. It's so I I had to figure out some some ways. It's a combination of sometimes using sync, but then and then you have to turn it off because oh, sometimes so there's annoying. a <laughs> yeah it's really you annoying. don't want to load up a song and have it loaded to the wrong bpm exactly that's yeah. so I, I hate i hate that yeah. yeah so wait i have a question did you is the final piece you sound so good on that mic i don't know why not fair yeah. right because yeah. he's got the neumann <laughs> he's got the neumann, he's got the neumann? Yeah. Yeah, yeah i got the neumann. i was like what kind of mic is that yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so great yeah it's amazing right <laughs> so wait so before i forget so the the final piece is the the actual audio being slowed back down so it's like slowed and throwed like reverbed no or is it just no. the video oh, okay that's a good because that could be kind of like a cool thing i always thought that like that would be stretch? a cool con <laughs> yeah that's so also like cool. in yeah. ableton what i do is i play things in double the speed and then i unwarp it and then i turn the pitch down an octave beautiful and then it goes back and then all of these artifacts and cool things yeah. happen yeah to the yeah. audio so I, I wanted to know if basically that's, that's what we did but then to the video ah so okay. the audio was sped up um normal so, audio so my song we rise da, 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 sounds like <laughs> yeah and um by speeding that by slowing that down uh on ableton it's minus 12 but yeah i think that's just like an octave an octave down um, you also speed the video, uh, slow the video down half. I don't know how to, how to say oh, that. Oh, you, you, you split the difference between the no, video not, and, it, and the you, you music? You both slow, slow them down. Just Basically, just slow it down. But yeah. because the, the audio is twice the speed, it uh -huh. becomes normal speed. Right. And the video becomes slow motion. And, yeah. And you, you run into these funny little things that you didn't think of. So when you, when you record something twice the, the speed... Um, and then you slow it down, it's it's normal speed then, right? Yeah. Yep. But you lose a lot of high end. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's just stuff that doesn't exist in the recording. So you slow it down and you kind of end up with a kind of muffled sound. Yeah. So I had to do a kind of po post EQ after that, make uh, it sound good. 
That's but, really cool, man. The, uh, a lot of TikTok a artists idea. are are releasing slowed versions of their it's popular a whole thing. songs. Sped and, up, slowed down. Yeah, it's it's super Very creative. Cool. I know people that just drop a single and then right away it's just like slowed down version, sped up version. Oh, really? Right really? away? It's what, it, it, it's Dude, what, huh? Imagine, imagine being Little Texas and trying to do this idea. I know. Oh my <laughs> do you know God. Little Texas is? He's yeah. 200 BPM. Yeah, yeah. slow his down. 400 like, BPM. It's not possible. It's not, it's not, it's not music anymore. It turns into like ambient. Be... Like That's just oh, going to yeah. be like one solid sine wave. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of The Excellent Show. This episode is brought to you by ExcellentSound.com. If you're an EDM producer and you need some serious sounds, make sure you guys go to ExcellentSound.com. They have everything you need from serious presets, project files, remakes, and even free downloads for you guys. And check out all these different testimonials that all these heavy-hitting EDM producers are saying about ExcellentSound.com. And on top of that, use code THEEXCELLENTSHOW at checkout to save 10% off your next purchase. Thanks, Excellent Sound. Let's get back to the episode. I would like to to, to jump into some of the, since we're kind of going down the production route, I, I, route I'd like to jump into some of like your production stuff and, and as far as like talking about the new album yeah. and how that whole process was. New album. I actually, <laughs> and since we're talking about emotion and, and art and all this stuff, I have a quote uh, that I'd like to read to you from, from um, I think it's from Insomniac that I thought was really interesting in talking about your sort of songwriting process. Hmm. So I'd hope to, for you to open up and, and share a little bit about how that whole process went down, if you're cool with that. Cool. I really want to know about his writing process. Yeah, yeah. Like your, your writing process is, is very interesting, as uh, far as what it's I... It's all AI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody deleted it out of the, the thing. I don't need the quote. I'll just tell you what it was. It was something from an Insomniac article. And um, basically, it's, it's basically talking about when you um, write your music... It's every everything has a purpose. Everything has a, a story, a oh, story, yeah. Yeah. an emotion. And what I was curious about is like, first off, what does that process look like? And is there ever actually, if that is your process, is does that include points where you're just sort of just sitting down with maybe you're not you're not thinking about how you're feeling and you're just playing? Like, does that happen in your writing process? Because it seems, it seems like I, and I can tell by your music, it is you have a very, very deep connection with your emotions and your music, and it's great to have that scene. And that's like you can who feel you are. It. You can definitely you can feel, feel it, it right? Thanks. So, um, thank you. Yep. Like, is 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 that always the case with all your songs, or are some songs just like playful, letting the song sort of write itself? Do you ever have that process? Oh, it's interesting hearing you talk about. You know, sometimes you put up a song and you're like, I'm I'm feeling this vibe. I want to make yeah. something, create something along the lines with my own, with my own baggage. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I rarely work like that. I oh. I've never worked like that. I've never, um, for me, writing a song is is rarely consciously inspired by something else. Wow. Subconsciously, probably. Yeah. Okay. Huh. You know, life yep. happens and we hear things and things flow through your mind. And But writing process for me is, it's it's really not a, not like, oh, I'm going to sit down and make something along these lines. It's, 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 I'm going to, what it is, I open my laptop and I start to play sounds without thinking and then let whatever is happening inspire the next step. Okay. So it's like a melody might inspire a chord progression and a chord progression might inspire a certain lyric. Like, I just want to see the light, for example. I didn't write that um, on... I was I was on a plane and I, and I made the... Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and instantly, I just want to see the light came, came to me. Wow. It was not like a reference from... A song or a, it, was it was just like that. it was just like that yeah. and i'm i'm in this weird area right now especially with the existential dance music album where i'm learning more and more about my myself and i'm at this point now where i'm like did i write i just want to see the light in terms of that phrase because i don't know what or who gave that to me sure you know, like yeah it just, if it was subconscious or subconscious was, yeah and i realized that vessel yeah but I realized now, back then, I also didn't know what it meant. I didn't mm -hmm. even know. I, I just loved the way it sounded. I just want to see the light. I just 
for some reason it felt right. Mm -hmm. But now five years later, I realized that it was about uh, finding light within, you know, finding some peace, finding, you know, some inner peace. That's, uh, and like, that, so I suddenly realized that writing this album, I was like, whoa, I just want to see the light. It's basically about this album now that I'm writing five years later. You know, it was really crazy to me. Wow. Subconsciously, you, you know a lot more. Sure. Yes. You don't know it, but subconsciously, it's there. It, it's there. Yeah. And uh, I think us humans, we're like, we are so, we have so much ego to think that we, we know all of that, but and then we, we think we're in control of that inspiration, but we're not. No. Nope. I think, I, you know, I don't know how I wrote most of my songs. I don't know. So I don't know what the writing process is it's just <laughs> I, you completely answered it and you just yeah. blew this, my mind yeah that is a, a, a beautiful explanation because oh. i definitely feel like we all have that feeling sometimes whether we're if we are if we are talking about songwriting right i'm not talking about necessarily just sometimes like at least i think for us we just try to write the fucking craziest sound design sort of slapper you know what i mean but when it comes to just like sitting down and just the, I love the fact that you're not even thinking about how you're feeling. You're letting the song dictate how you're feeling. And I've had mm -hmm. moments like that in, in writing music before, too, where I didn't know what was going to come out. And, you know, next thing you know, I'm crying in my MIDI controller. You know what I mean? It's just like getting best, into it, you know? feeling. And it's like, oh, okay, I guess I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling this way. And then to have the uh the foresight or i don't know if it's a foresight or or to, to be able to look back and go later as you're doing this new album and be like that's what this that's what i was going through at that moment i think that is so so beautifully said and that makes so much sense to me as far as the writing process is just allowing yourself to create yeah without any sort of thought purpose or anything you're just whatever's coming out is coming out and you're just a f like a, a flow, yeah, that's a, flow yeah. state yeah or, Do you, uh, I mean, you might feel, you might be feeling sad on a day sure, you know, yeah. but it's not it's not like i never go in like oh now i'm gonna write a sad song because i feel sad yeah because you know? also what is sad I, i've heard i've had people say oh this is such a happy song and then the, the same song and someone says it's a sad song to me so you don't even know what a sad or happy song is it's just I feel like what you're saying is true. You gotta allow yourself to, to. Don't even think too much about what you're, what you're feeling. Just let Do. the universe inspire. I don't know. I, I don't want to get into a whole tantrum about like That's if it's here. if it's all <laughs> determined already. But I don't know. Uh, yeah. Like, I feel like thinking that we're so in control of the creative process is is not helping you yeah i don't sure. think we are do yeah. you do you try to create the environment to get into that flow state mm -hmm. of writing do you mm -hmm. have any like rituals to create that for yourself uh, or i think that ritual is not it's not created in the moment it's it's how you live life that's the ritual you know H how you open yourself to life even this conversation could spark inspiration mm -hmm. uh, or or going for a walk during the day yeah that's for me that's the ritual of getting into that but it's not a thing that that i i don't clock in like that it's mm. not like oh now i'm gonna make a song so you're always clocked in yeah. or never well yeah, <laughs> that's the whole thing yeah that's and i think that's why also part of the reason why it's hard for me to collaborate sometimes because mm -hmm. it has to be so personal to me you know like if i don't resonate with a certain lyric or or melody it's hard for me to 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 feel it yeah mm -hmm. do you need that attachment to i, I need it I to need the it. song you can't just uh and sometimes i wish i didn't because it would i think my career would be uh, <laughs> a lot easier <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah that makes sense because it would just be like oh here's a song yeah and i know mm -hmm. that's how it works too you know like, like uh, and, and and there's i'm not not judging that either but i i i want to be in control of every sound and even like a little synth sound uh, i have this old sampler that i hum into and then it, it creates a synth out of the voice basically oh yeah yeah. how you did light that. right yeah 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 and and every everything you sample in there is unique like you can never create the same exact sample twice mm. so all those little things 
I think though they add up to the Son Holo sound, and, mm. and I hope that's why it feels personal. You know. Yeah, it I, definitely feels personal. I read yeah. I read that you did a lot of like ghost production uh, on your your musical journey. Yeah. Um, and I used to. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was wondering like was that was that really hard for you because of that attachment to your music? It was only hard. It's it's hard when you. <laughs> okay, how do how do I need? It's a loaded question. How do I question. not throw shade? Um, it's hard when you. You think you're collaborating, but you're ghost producing it at, at the oh, end. Oh yeah, I've been you there. Know, that I've was been there. that was the yeah that was the the <laughs> final drop for me. Is that a, how do you say that? The final straw. Straw. Final yeah. straw. In Holland, it's the 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 drop that fills the bucket. That, oh, oh last really? Drop. The last that drop sense. that overflows the. Oh yeah. wow. <laughs> well, what's the straw ma- based on? Straw that so broke the like straw that broke back. the camel's back. I thought so it was drawing it. straws, dude. No, no. It's, well, that that could be actually no. That could be also <laughs> used because last the final straw, straw. You know, you have plenty oh, of it's plenty both. of yeah, it's both. to give. You know, and then the last straw mm-hmm. would be like when you would what would be the very last straw that would be placed on top either a camel or horse that would actually break yeah. it. So it's the very yeah. Last the final straw was when when I I thought I was collaborating with someone, but then. They uploaded the song as their song, and and it did really well. And I was like, Ooh. oh, but but at the same time, maybe that was important for me. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was important for me to see that, oh, apparently that song is doing really well. I can just do it by myself. You're capable. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm, yeah. interesting. Cool. And that's when Son Holo. I said, okay, Son Holo. My friends made a joke about, oh, your your Sander van Dijk is not a it's not an artist name. You should call yourself Son Holo. And then everyone thought it was really funny and I just kind of stuck with that. There was a long time where I was very insecure about the name because I thought everyone would just think it's a joke. Oh, I love the name. Yeah, but That's like so crazy. I think we're past the joke now. I think it's serious. That's for now, sure. So. Oh yeah, it's 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 in stone. It's written in stone. I don't think anybody likes sharing their name. It always is a little bit of embarrassing, it, it, I feel like. It, You're it, like eh, yeah. it, it's your own it, name. Whatever the name is, it doesn't matter what the name is. It just yeah. isn't cool until it is. Yeah. yeah I, I heard DJ Snake doesn't like He hates name. it. Yeah. He hates it. Um when you when you finish I hate to keep talking about life, but just uh, no, it's a great it's a great example. When you finish a song like that, for example, when you finish like we rise or you finished light Mm -hmm. when it's done you're like okay the song's done do you have like a significantly intense special feeling about it like when you finished light were you like oh i think this one's really special yes so okay i i wrote um i wrote i just want to see the light and the chords i had to drop all all of that done i do want to give a shout out to to uh ari and tessa who also contributed some lines to the song. Great. Uh, Tessa is, uh, I went to school with her um, at the Rotterdam Conservatory. And uh, her, her artist project project's called Luton. Uh, and I just knew her voice. I sent it to a lot of different uh, uh, Vocalist? vocalists. Yeah. I think I got like 20, 20 wow. different takes. And wow. her voice was just like, that's it. Um, yeah. And um, I, so I had that song, and I, and I, I, I do think to come back to your uh, writing process question. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think I finished like ninety percent of the song, but then I realized, oh, this, this could be a special song, you know. So okay. that's where I feel like having a a career in music does come with a specific choice. Like, do I want to go? Do I want this song to maybe, you know, be a be a radio song? You know, mm-hmm. that's a choice you make if you want certain songs. You you, I don't know how if I'm expressing that correctly, but I, I get what you're saying. You, you, you want to put that extra I wanna, effort. I want to be realistic because I I want to say like, oh, you just gotta do your thing. But there is some choices sometimes you make to to make it more have more potential more potential in the commercial the audience and i'm not saying that a commercial success is is success like mm-hmm. for me i realized success, success is more about being content with with yourself mm-hmm. that's like you know um but some sometimes you make a decision like hey i want i want this song to have uh not just one phrase. I just want to see that. I want to add some more vocals to it. So then Ari and Tessa, they helped me with the lyrics. Um, 
and then we made this whole anthem out of it. You yeah, know? anthem um, is the right word. And and uh, yeah, I just want to see the light was just something that came to me, and I don't know how, but I kn knew it was important and. So uh, cool. And even listening back to the melody. That's such mm -hmm. a existential note <laughs> to pick, you know? Yeah. Da, yeah. Da, da. yeah. One more song I want to bring up before we get to the album is Hold Fast. Wow. Dude, when no. I heard, I lost my mind when what? I heard that song. The first time I heard the song, I saw the video. I didn't see this. I didn't listen to the song. I watched the video. And you want to know it's so funny? You know how I think it's the second drop or chorus, whatever you want to call it, in the video. In the second drop, you have that stop stutter thing, and mm -hmm. it's just in the video. So I was playing the song for a friend, and I was like, wait for the second drop. There's this crazy dope stu like pause stutter thing, and it, it's not in the song. It's only in the video. Really? Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. I know that, that that's a Monster Cat release. Yeah, I think. it's a Monster yeah. Cat release. Yeah. Um, that video was beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. I was super insecure about it because really? I, I made it with my uh my homie thor back at home in our studio and we we had no budget so we just you know did what we thought was cool and i showed it to some friends and some of them didn't like it no way yeah really but still we i i really fucked with it dude so. i was i i i heard that so i saw the video and i was just going up to all i'm like you have to listen to the song you have to watch this video it's amazing so can i ask you like when was this? It was like it was a long time ago. 2015, 2016, something, something like, like that. that. It might have been even. I don't know. Yeah. I rarely play that song anymore because it's it's so hard to play or DJ that song. It's such a. It's not. It's a lot of space. A lot of space. It doesn't really have a, a BPM like in terms of. It doesn't have a solid groove. The drop is weird. I, dun, tick -a -tick -a -tick -tick. I thought it was great, but yeah. But how did you experience that EDM? Hmm. Or was it? I think. I don't. I don't know how. I can't. I, I can't exactly explain how I experienced it, like genre wise. I just listened to it and I was like, "Damn, I really, really love this." Was it the sounds? Or it was. The... It, it, it. I think it was the combination of the sounds, the arrangement, and the space. Because hmm. at that time, in my, uh, you know, experience listening to electronic music, I didn't hear too many people doing something with that sound palette. And incorporating that much space, mm. and and there was something super unique and different about the vocal at that time. Uh, it was cool. just there's I don't know I don't you know, know why because I didn't know a lot about e EDM yeah. or, or 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 electronic music. I yeah. never went to to clubs. The first time I went to a club is because I had to DJ there. I I, I wasn't in the space. That's awesome. That's so <laughs> cool. So cool. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, and I think. <laughs> That was a, a blessing for me that I I didn't know a lot about the culture. Yeah, I just wanted I just wanted to bring up that song. That's cool, I, 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 and I'm and I really like hearing about what you like about it because it's so personal to me. And then to hear the fact that you connected to that song years ago, some in another country, you know, far away from from where I was. Yeah, it was just I loved. I think that's what I love the most about making music: hearing about the connections you made to sounds or songs or words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, thank you for sharing that. That's yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I can't believe they didn't like the video. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys got to watch this video. Sometimes, it, it, yeah, it's, I would love it's, to it's, see it's it. A I never... It's a beautiful video. And you want to know what? Like, I, I didn't even know exactly what the lyrics were, were saying mm -hmm. in a lot of it, but I just like it just like made me feel something. Like, I didn't even right. need to know what it exactly right, was sure. saying. I just, it made me feel like a lot of something. Yeah. And I didn't know even know if the video was cohesive with what it was saying. Or if it was, I, I didn't know what was going on, but then the visual also made me feel something. It was a really interesting experience. It was like a, I think that's, a that's very unique experience for me musically. Yeah. Yeah. I, f I feel like there's a lot of songs uh, I don't, that I don't know exactly what they're about from the perspective, perspective of the writer, but I know what they're about to me as a feeling. Mm -hmm. I might not even, I might not even be able to put it into words, but I know what it means to me and how I felt when I heard it. Yeah. You know, and it's like something beyond words. I think, I think as humans, uh, my, I feel like when I'm talking a lot, my words and my accent gets worse and worse. This <laughs> You're is good. Like, Don't yeah, worry yeah, about it. Like, the same, buddy. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> yeah, fine. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's totally um, great. Don't worry about it. But I think that feeling you felt 
it's probably something beyond words because you, you you're struggling to describe that. Uh, yeah, it's hard. I, I just felt a lot of something. Yeah, yeah, that's all I can really and say. And I think that is the most beautiful thing. Yeah, because if if you can't describe something in words, I think that's my favorite thing. Yep. Because it's so it's bigger than that. Words are so finite, you know. They're just so limited. Mm -hmm. And we try to categorize our emotions and feelings with words. Right. But there's so much more beyond that that we know what that feels like, but we just can't categorize it and we should be more in touch with that i think i have a question that you were you were kind of going towards frank yep. um we were talking about like knowing <coughs> um having the the superpower of knowing when a song is super special and then you kind of have the the power to direct it in a certain way um hmm. is there how do you feel is that a learning uh and does that is that kind of like a an ability that you can learn or does it kind of come natural to people? To be honest, I think it's more like a guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's I would be reaching if I said that I knew Light was going to be a big song, hmm. but I knew it was important to me. Oh. I, it, I knew it was important to put out, but I did not know it would be a, a commercial success like that. Um, but I knew it was important to me. And I think that's a skill like learning or, or feeling confident and, and learning find the confidence to put out something that you feel confident about or a music video that your friends don't like and still put it yeah. out yes you know that's huge um, i think um that's that's the skill yeah but i do not know what I've, I've had other songs that i thought were great hits and they were not wow Can you name one i really like this song i wrote with bipolar sunshine called find your way um, it's, maybe you don't even ha haven't even heard it. It was part of the album. It was a single, but it didn't work um, as a as a commercial success. There is a song called "One Thing" that I think was really uh, meaningful. Uh, and I thought maybe even a better song than "Light," but it did wasn't a hit. And then mm. there's this song "You've Changed, I've Changed" that no one believed in as a single. And then we dropped that because the vinyl was delayed, and we needed to 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 bridge a month. So yeah. we, it was like, okay, let's let's make that another single. And that blew up and Kid Cudi tweeted about it and like and wow, so that's, you just don't okay. know. You just don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. Go for it, Frank. Yeah, that, that, was really that, was Frank yeah. that was really weird. That was really weird. We have a special <laughs> we have a little synchronicity here. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. so so we before the pod we were talking about uh what our dream collab would be for you to do. Kid Cudi? And Kid Cudi was my answer. That was yeah. Frank's answer. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. I would love that. Yeah. yeah. I That's feel like crazy. that would be a perfect collab. Yeah. That would be That's perfect. so crazy. You guys are on this wavelength right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I love I it. I know, but I'm, I'm serious. The fact uh, that's possible, you know, the fact mm -hmm. that you connected to my music f for many years already, you know, yeah. there must be something maybe personality-wise that that's very common in us. You know, you don't yeah. know. It, it's, it's awesome. It's just like when I think about some of my favorite songs by him. And they have like these lush, beautiful kind of sawy style chords, and like this, like I don't know, this like really. I feel like he would just like his voice would really cater to your sound palette like perfectly. You know, I, I love, love I love Kid Cudi. I, I love him. He's one of my favorite artists of all time. He's legendary. Yeah. Right? And and <sighs> wow. <Okay. Yeah. laughs> Danny, we thought weird. of ours. Yeah. Like we're like I'm like oh I got a great question because one of our questions is is which we'd like to hear after if you're okay with this, is who your dream collab would be with. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, what if we came up with an idea of, of what we would, what our dream collab of, of you collabing with? And then he and I like thought of our answers. And then Frank came out of left field with Kid Cudi to yeah. us. And I was like, oh shit, that makes, like, that makes sense. Yeah, you know totally. I mean? So I think for me, I would love to see you uh, work on a song with to see you and Porter get together would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I would love to see what you guys could come together with. Yeah. Um I would love that. Yeah. I would be really stoked on a collab like that. And yeah. Maybe maybe we can make it happen one day. I don't know. Yeah. He watching, watches this so. Porter, if you're watching, <laughs> let's love let's you. Let's make a beautiful song. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that would be I think it would be really cool because I think you guys would be able to come together and create a lot of, I think for me, the reason why I would like to, to see that is I could see you guys creating some amazing um, melodic elements together that I think are lacking in EDM. Cool. Yeah. What my, was yours? My dream collab is uh, Said the Sky. You and Said the Sky. 
You guys call it "Son the Sky." We actually, <laughs> we actually uh, have a, the start of a song. Hey! Oh no way! No way! That's awesome. Yeah. I feel like Let's you guys go. would be like just the dream team, like band, like on stage. Such that would be a, such so a nice insane. Guy. Yeah, I'm really, he's, he's I, I great. Spend spend some time in the studio with him, and uh, you know, he's a real one. Good, great guitar player as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sky the Holo, dude. Sky the Holo. <laughs> Said the Holo. Yeah. Your turn. I never asked him about it. The artist name, Set the Sky, where that came from. Dude, I, I, Parker, I dude. asked him and he just laughed and then it was the end of the podcast. No, Parker didn't oh, say wait, where the name. Oh, wait, we never got the answer? Yeah, we never got the Parker answer. Parker didn't ask him where he got the name. He said, what did the sky say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, <true. laughs> that's what I asked him, yeah. of course. Trevor. But your dream yeah. collab, sir. Yes, please. Oh, this is the hardest question. Yeah, hardest question. You can give us a top I, three? I get anxiety from this <laughs> oh, question. Oh, shit, I'm oh. so sorry. <laughs> it's this knife, and then that question, <laughs> I'm out of here. Like, no, but oh, like, no. do you ever get that feeling? Like, when, when someone says, hey, what's your favorite movie? Yeah. It's, I, I have an answer for that immediately. I think, I think, okay, go ahead. Inglourious Bastards. Wow, interesting. Great movie. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah, but that's only one. your favorite movie at this time. No, it's been my favorite movie for like, since the day it came out, pretty much. More than, yeah. like, everybody's favorite movie, like, back in the day was Fight Club. Like everybody's, yeah, and, then that that, was true. and then you change, and then now it's, and then you turn seventeen. But yes, I. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, maybe a better. Um, I still like Fight Club, though. Yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, it's me too. Fuck it. <laughs> so maybe, yeah, like maybe, like you said, like maybe just give us uh, some or or some don't dream. if you don't want to. Yeah, you don't have to if there's I, a couple. I really want to get more into the the hip hop space. Hey. I think I think uh, I started this whole project as a beat project at the beginning I, I i got into electronic music because of beat making and um because i i was i used to play guitar i still play a lot of guitar but i used to be a guitarist and that was my thing and then i got so bored of it and everyone started to sound the same everyone wanted to sound like Jimi hendrix and john mayer and i was like <laughs> you know what i'm gonna do something completely different i'm gonna make beats um and and you know I was just inspired by like those Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. I think that's why I also remixed the, uh-huh. the Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah. We were going to bring that up. We were going to bring the that next up. episode yeah. thing. Um, that's how I kind of started, just fun making beats. And, and then for some reason, I got kind of categorized as EDM and, and I embraced that too. I was awesome. like, okay, you guys are giving me this opportunity. I'm going to make this my thing. Sick. That's so amazing. What an interesting turn of events how that works. Yeah. Like people yeah. are like, I'm going to make EDM, and then they, it works or it doesn't. You're like, oh, I'm going to make music. Oh, thanks for yeah. this label. I'll take it. Like, yeah. that's pretty well, cool. Well, if you listen to my beats, most of the most of those beats were like hip-hop kind of beats. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you halftime, had, trap. Uh, um, and, and now I've, you know, over the years, I explored other types of, uh, like, house beats and, and garage stuff. Uh, this new album has got a lot of different It's fantastic. Genres. Bro, these sounds suck. I can't work this dropout, dude. Shh. He doesn't know that I know this super secret serum hack. Watch this. What is that? What did you just do? Dude, it's a one button drop, baby. Let me see this right now. Excellent Sound's brand new preset pack, Drops Only Volume 3, is out now. It includes 100 of the best drop ready basses, little to no processing needed. No plucks, no pads, just bass. Go to excellentsound.com to pick up your copy today. And don't forget to use code The Excellent Show for 10% off your purchase. Let's get you back into the video. How does how does it feel to have like a viral song before the TikTok crazy viral stuff? Like that happened Next way episode before. Episode remix, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that 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 must have been insane. Where there was not really a platform for that, you know? Yeah. It went crazy viral on YouTube. YouTube. You got the kids. You got the bells. Like. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> ring, ding, ding, Another ding, song ding, ding. I showed to my friends, and they said, "I don't know, man. It sounds a little bit too <laughs> exotic. No way. No too way. Exo- I don't know. Too exotic. It's like okay, but I still put it out, and it became like." That's awesome. so crazy. Uh, you just made me realize that that my friend said, oh, it sounds too exotic. 
So <laughs> since it was a since it was a remix, do you do you get uh, paid on that or? Is it one of those things where it's exposure? Because I know that that's like a big decision you have to make when you My put out a remix. My management tried to to clear that remix with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Impossible, yeah. of course. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No one ever yeah. got through. Um, I think I made some money off of that because we figured out we could monetize just the parts that that. I produce. Ah, smart. Cool. So, so oh, the drop wow. is fully me. Oh. Yeah. But then the 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 beat with with Snoop Dogg rapping over it, obviously I couldn't monetize. But yeah. there's parts in there that I could monetize. Interesting. I don't know how that works, but but yeah, I, I but it was mainly exposure. Uh, yeah. Honestly, That's... that that song was my my ticket to America. Yeah. <laughs> like wow. My ticket That's to awesome. America. That's like, so crazy. cool, man. Yeah. Um, because back in the days, I I um, I made like six or seven remixes like that. Like I did Miss Jackson remix, the Nelly remix, Ride with Me. A bunch yeah. of hip hop uh, remixes, yeah. Yeah, the hip hop, the hip hop. I called them "Don't Touch the Classics" because, you know, some people might say you can't touch those songs. You know, yeah, they're, that's so cool. They're huge. Um, but in terms of exposure, it was it was amazing and. Um, even now, there's there's TikTok videos with that sound going on still. Yep. Yeah. There's even a kid that became viral after singing ding 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 ding. I don't yeah. know who that is, but it, it, it's a meme. Talk about longevity. Totally. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it, and it, and um. <laughs> Crazy. There's the funny thing to me is that there's a generation of kids that see that as the original. They're like, oh yeah, that's. <laughs> the song holo edit but they don't really know the the original that's so insane that is that is yeah. so wild it's kind of like how people like may think that the skrillex remix of benny benassi is like the, yeah. the song yeah but it's not yep. <laughs> you know kind of similar to that isn't it kind of funny too that like uh, for an entire like pro- like a producer like dr dre who is built off of sampling other people <laughs> and then making a ton it. of money <laughs> oh my off God. sampling That's from other so people true. What when somebody a... else does it to him. He, and it's obviously, I'm sure they knew about it. It was ginormous, yeah. right? So it's like... They definitely know. did. Isn't that, they I mean, definitely that's a little to. hypocritical. Like, it's it's, yeah. hip-hop it's people, actually hilarious right? when you put it that way. <laughs> if you think wow. about it. Um, yeah, interesting. It's the labels, though. I yeah, mean, I know. Sure, it's I'm not sure they're cool with it, but... When I said Angels and Airways in Blink-182, I had no idea that you were like, uh, it seemed like you got real excited. Those, those are huge, <laughs> huge. Tom DeLonge is a huge influence yeah. on just me as a person, yeah. as a kid. So, uh, But when, when I was going through like a lot of your catalog and I was just like really trying to make sure that, you know, uh, that we're prepared, I wanted to know everything that I possibly could. And one thing I didn't know is that you collaborated with Rivers. Rivers from Cuomo. Weezer. Yeah. And if, if I'm guessing, you know, I don't, you know, just from talking to you, it, I'm assuming Weezer was a big influence on you. And, and what was that whole experience like? Because that guy is so amazingly talented. Yeah. yeah. How did that happen? You're going to laugh. <laughs> he tweeted at me and he said, I really love light. <laughs> wow. Whoa. That's really how he tweeted at me. Power uh, of a song, man. Crazy. Yeah. And uh, and then we DM'd him. I was like, oh, well, thanks. Um and then I was in the studio. I made this guitar kind of beat. Like I thought, and I was like, oh, whoa, maybe this is something that Rivers could do something with. Because he was like, oh, send me like beats or something. And I was like, okay, send it to him. <laughs> he sends me a full song back like whoa. the day after. And whoa. I was like, I was showing it to my friend. I was, and I was like, dude, this is Rivers Cuomo singing on my beat. What the Holy fuck is going shit. on? Holy shit. Did your friend not like it again? <laughs> no. My friend would like it. He was, like, he was like, this is actually good. Um, and and um, we went back and forth because c- c- I said, I'm, I'm really specific on lyrics. Mm-hmm. And I have to have a personal connection with it. So I I had the balls to go back That's crazy. to wow. Rivers Cuomo and say, I like this part, but can we change these lyrics? And he was super open. He was wow. like, oh, yeah. He, I think he's just an incredible writer. And he just, like, oh. He probably really respected that as well, the fact that you were so in touch Maybe, with your yeah. art that you were like, hey, even though you are who you are, 
Yeah. And, yeah. and he really would like if it was like this. He probably actually loved that. Yeah. And I think at some point he he disappeared from Twitter again or something. It's hard to track him, but mm-hmm. but he he was on tour with Weezer and he I think he recorded it on tour and then sent it to me and and we went back and forth a couple of times and I I still don't know how how he felt like he wanted to work with me like it's <laughs> based off a tweet like hey i really like light to like writing a song together and we never met in person uh, oh wow, wow. We never met in person but i would love to but it's just i i think he's doing 20 things at the same time I don't yeah, know. yeah yeah that's incredible man so cool what Good a for story you, dude that's awesome yeah. yeah but i i have to I have the DM still, like screenshot it somewhere on my phone, where where we literally going back and forth on, on words and email. Also, we emailed, and um, so cool. Funny enough, I went through uh, a lot of Weezer stuff a couple of days ago. Huh. I was mm-hmm. listening to to their their catalog and Pinkerton, dude, such a great album. You know Pinkertron? Of course. <sighs> God damn, you have <laughs> Japanese girls. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that album is so underrated. It's super underrated. And and I think the story is like he, he the first album was the the blue album. What's, what's it I called think so. Again? Yeah, I think I think I, I mean I don't. There's like the blue. There's the green. I'm not like I like Weezer. I'm not like super into Weezer. Like I like if you were on the but talk Blink you are. Too, yeah, yeah, I can I can go all day long. Yeah. But I definitely <laughs> I definitely know yeah. you know Pinkerton and I definitely yeah, Pinkerton. Yeah, like that. You know? That's a really. Uh, really I, there was album. an album before that, I believe. I but yeah, but that, yeah that was the second album and it was yeah. not as successful. Right. And it, but. It's it's gotten this cult status now. Like it's yes. actually one of the greatest albums. It's did. amazing. Um, but Angels and Airwaves, same. Like when I first like saw the like I think it's called the Adventure. Yep. I was like, love okay, that song. So cool. So good. Imagine um, working with Tom DeLong, dude. I would love to. <laughs> I would die. I almost had a chance to teach Mark Ableton. No way. One, I had one chance. No way. And it didn't happen. I had a friend who was working with John Feldman who was working on the, their record at the time when Matt Skiba joined. Yeah. And, and Tom was out. And Mark was looking for somebody to teach him Ableton. And my buddy kept bringing up my name. And it never happened. I met him, but I never... Dude, it's because you weren't certified. I was exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But side funny name. side note, my aunt is in uh, the Beverly Hills Weezer uh, music video. Oh, no, no way. way! Yeah, <laughs> no Beverly way. Hills. Yeah, my aunt, my aunt. Went, so it was my mom. It's my mom's brother's ex wife. So she's not my blood related, but uh, yeah, she, she was a she was a Playboy bunny. She lived in the mansion with Huff and was in that video. Damn, yeah. that's crazy. I got I got to go to the Playboy mansion three times. No way, as yep. a young child, very young, prepubescent, prepubescent, yeah. prepubescent Frank. <laughs> yep, <laughs> little Frank. That's crazy, yeah. little Frank. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. baby Frank. So this one, uh, I'm I'm gonna try to word this as best as possible because I feel like. You're in a very unique situation. It's kind of a two-parter. If you, you don't get exactly what I'm saying, just tell me to shut the fuck up. Okay. Um, um, so I feel like you're in a very unique position as most artists, especially in our space, I feel like have that one song, majority of them. They have that one song that makes them pop the fuck off, right? And I feel like you're in a very rare position where you keep having that one song and you keep raising the bar. Um, like you had the next episode and the remix and then you had we rise and then you had the light and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and I was just curious if you raising that bar over and over again feels like, do you feel like you have to keep doing that? And does it feel, do, do you put any pressure on yourself or do you just not even, are you just, are you capable of just not even thinking about it and just making music and creating like you always do? Yeah, I had I call it the light syndrome. Um, okay. After, after <laughs> nice, nice. Like that. After light, I uh, I I felt that pressure for a long time. Okay. Yeah, for like, because I was also with the label and they wanted me to follow it up. Yeah, for like you know I know there was pressure like oh like what's the next song's gonna be and like they also tried to link me up with other writers and and that's just not how I write. I, it's mm-hmm. got to come from my from my heart. Yeah. And then I did. I made album one, mm-hmm. and I showed it to the label. They didn't like it, hmm. so I bought myself out of that deal. Wow! And I had to pay a, uh, like a, a penalty also. But I did it on my own label, Bitbird. Uh, and Which is awesome. It's incredible. Yeah. Good for you. Luckily enough, we had a song on there called "Lift Me from the Ground" that really popped off. Love that song. Yeah, "Lift Me from the Ground" was 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 also like a hit. Yeah, in that it was. Sense. Um, 
and um, but yeah, like after light, I, I felt that pressure, but that kind of waned off. Is that how you say it? Weaned, weaned off. Weaned yeah. off. Weaned. Yeah. <laughs> weaned. Um, I think, I think having songs is one thing that keep like like hit songs or like I I wouldn't even consider them hits. Like "Lift Me from the Ground" was a hit in the EDM in EDM, the EDM EDM hits. EDM hits. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, I think, you know, I, I made a funny remix of, of, uh, Skrillex, uh, Rumble. Yeah. Rumble. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I heard of that. It. Yeah. And people playing that out now too. So it's, it's little moments of that are important, but I think if anything, it's important to, uh, have that consistent, uh, connection with your listeners and your followers. Okay. So even though if, if an album, like I'm about to drop this new album, Existential Dance Music, the album in itself functions as that hit you know even though mm. there, there might not be a song that pops the fuck off the fact that you're giving people a new body of work and showing them that you are so invested in, invested in what you do and and i think that's really important if anything yeah and and touring plays a big part in that too you know yeah absolutely. going to smaller markets fucking and stuff. wichita yeah and like and 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 playing on a wednesday night for for people there and they're so excited about it and that that's how you keep yeah there is some pressure of there is some pressure of keeping that relevance in a way i yeah. feel it sometimes i feel I, I think it's really important to just circle back for a second uh i i felt like there was a lot of weight in what you said earlier when you uh you said that oh you didn't think that uh light was going to be a hit you didn't even know or think about that you just knew that it was really important to you and when you felt how important to you that song was, that ended up being the hit, right? So just being, continuing to stay self-aware and and knowing when you feel something is that important to you. Like, like fo mm -hmm. focus on it being for you, making you feel the way you, you want it to make you feel, right? Yeah. Like, that's like, that speaks volumes. Yeah. Because that one felt so important to you, mm -hmm. and it became important to everyone else. Yeah. So I think that's really important to do as an artist. Yeah, and and that's where I'm at right now with with the uh, with the new album EDM Existential Dance Music. I uh, I go. know we live in a it's it's very obvious that we live in a current uh, space where everyone prefers singles. The yep. labels prefer singles. Um, the most you know TikTok prefers singles. Like yeah, ev everything is singles. Um, it's fast food almost. Fast food, yeah, um, and. But yet still, I feel like I really need to tell a, a longer, bigger story. And that's why I decided to do another album. And I, I love think that. the people that, you know, the people that need to hear it will hear it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I think also it sounds like the label was probably adding pressure sounds to like that it. feeling to have to follow up light. And then creating your own sort of label to create your own vision probably is freeing you up. Mm -hmm to actually be your best most authentic yeah, self that was one of the reasons why i started bitbird like back in the days already um just my own creative space creative mm -hmm. creative freedom um but that's a whole other story we, we can get it into that in the next podcast yeah, yeah. coming yeah. back but yeah yeah come back yeah i would love to come back yeah, but yeah. um like the um, I f sometimes you know i doubt myself a little bit i'm like why am i even doing a full album because i know Everyone just wants singles. Radio prefers singles too, and but I think sometimes I wake up and I realize I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. Yep. So I love that. You have a lot to say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I love, a lot to express, and and I and I. Uh, there's not even a reason. I just have to do it. You know, it's I I don't I can't verbalize the reason right now. I can't put it's it into bigger words. than words. Yeah. It, yeah. I just I feel like this album just had to be made. Yeah, just listen to it. I, I got really inspired by uh, classical music and like it's a story from front to back. It's it's about um, connecting to your deeper self. Um, the question, who am I? It's like very important in this whole album mm -hmm. rollout because um, that's something I've you know to to just to bridge it a little bit to anxiety and like uh, mental health stuff uh i you know i got some anxiety uh, last year 
just moved to the U.S. and I got some big shows and I got so anxious and I just lost myself in the anxiety. Hmm. And uh, this album is really about getting back to your true core, your true self. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is by asking yourself, who am I? Because then you're like, oh, I, I'm Son Holo. But then you realize I'm not Son Holo. I'm, I'm Sonder van Dijk. But then I'm also not Sonder van Dijk. And you, sh- and you stop peeling you start to peel down the layers and you get to the realization that you're something beyond the words, something yeah. beyond the, you're an energy, you're something way vaster than words could ever describe. And the last track on the album, uh, I'll probably show you it. It's, it's like before the, this colorful drop hits, it's like a feeling you can't describe. And it just like bursts into this explosion of, emotions and sounds and oh awesome yeah it's amazing. cool and, yeah. i love how you connected it to seeing the light is essentially almost sounds like it's it's about finding <laughs> yourself it's it and is. this essentially that you're connecting the album to being the light is essentially knowing who you are and or maybe continuing yeah. to learn i love that that's so 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 beautifully put yeah and i didn't know that at the time I, and, and that that's one of the the reminders that I keep telling myself, like I'm supposed to be here because mm-hmm. I, back then I wrote that and now it all makes sense. Um, so cool. Yeah. I think the light is really about finding, finding that light inside yeah. you know, yourself. And we all have that light, you know, Absolutely. sometimes it get a little bit buried in other, yeah. in the noise and the darkness of the world. But, um, you know, seeing the light for, to me, it's about that. And it can mean something else to some, some other listeners. That's fine too. But uh, yeah, I just want to see the light, even if it makes me blind. You know, even if you have to go through the lows, mm-hmm. you just want to, you know, find yourself and, and you find d- that peace. And you didn't even know what it meant until later, which I is know. so because yeah. people it's ask you what your songs mean a lot. I've seen and, too. Yeah, people and I remember have... back when that song blew up, light. I had to do these interviews, and people were like, "What's it about?" And I, and I had to fabricate a story around it. Oh sure. man! And I never really. It, it wasn't like I was lying, but it never feel it really felt like uh, I, re- I never really felt content with what I said about it. Mm-hmm. And now I get to tell you guys, yeah, that's yeah, what it's about. And this feels like beautifully oh, said. Yeah. What light is really about was yeah. writing was yeah, writing exactly. the new album. Uh, you said you were dealing with a lot of anxiety and stuff. Was and I'm sure the album took a while. And you said that anxiety was taking place like last year. You're mm-hmm. saying was was the act of writing the album like therapeutic 100 percent. yeah yeah like all all albums for me are like that but okay. but this one in particular because uh because i physically felt the effects of anxiety okay like i it, it it started to get to a it was starting to get to a point where i couldn't function anymore as wow a, like i got panic attacks and i yeah. never you know i don't know if you've ever experienced panic attacks yes. some people yep. Yep. Uh, it's terrible yeah and and f- to me before I experienced a panic attack, it was always like something I would just read about or or see people talk about. But when you experience one yourself, you know, I like waking up and thinking you're about to die and like having to call someone. Yeah. And then realizing that's all your mind that's creating that, the anxiety. Yep. And then you start to realize, whoa, I need to I need to start learning about myself. And mm-hmm. and and uh, the whole album was like this process of figuring that wow. out. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I think that for me, when I had like my first panic attack, it was like this weird thing of like, it was in my head. It's ev- everything's cool. I can handle it. And then it like turned physical. Exactly. And yeah. I couldn't breathe. My chest started. I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? Because it's, you know why? Because it's, it is at the end all one thing. Yeah. We always talk about mental health, but it's actually just health. Because mm-hmm. it's, you know, um, your mind is able to make your heart race. You know, you're, you, some people break out in hives, you know, when they get stressed. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's the proof. Like, how is that possible? It's all connected to each yeah. other. Yeah, it's, your mind is yeah. so powerful, man. It's crazy, dude. Like, Same I can thing. relate to, I have, I've struggled with, with anxiety, like, really bad. And I've been struggling with it for years. So, yeah. it's cool to uh to hear that sort of uh you open up 
uh, and be a little bit more personable about that, especially like for me. So yeah. I appreciate that. Man. I mean, that's for me, that's the and whole purpose of too. music. Yeah. The whole purpose of music is uh, to open that up. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's emotions. It's real. It's, it's to me, it's all about the journey through life. Yeah. You know, and the journey to light. Ooh. <laughs> I love that. Also, the name of the album, Mwah. Existential yeah. Dance oh, Music. <laughs> killed it. Thanks. So, so with that, I, I, I know Parker's got some rapid fire questions. And with talking about your, your album and all the emotion that you put into it, we just have like one final question on it. <laughs> and we just want to know, is, is, um, is San Holo in love? <laughs> it sure sounds like it in the music. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be a person. It could be anything. I'm in yeah, I think uh love is a very uh love, man. I think everything is love. Always love. That's why I'm here. Um when when people come up to me and say, Hey, this song is really special to me, that's love. And then the way I feel is love, the way they feel is love. I am definitely in love with with the world and uh, people, uh, yes, it's a. It's <laughs> if you want to really start getting into this question, we need to plan three podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was just supposed to be yes. just a good. We don't have to get all the way into it, but it's just it is apparent, and also like just bringing it back to how we started the podcast too about you talking about what it means to yeah. say the word love to somebody in your culture, yeah. but it is apparent, and it's not just necessarily love as in like I'm in love with somebody that there is love in your music. Let me let me say let me end it with this. We exist in love. You know, it's all this is all love. Yeah. And, and this is also love. And hey, I love you, man. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. We love you too. Yes, we love you. That's amazing. Yeah. So open up the new album. Yeah, yeah. look at the new album, baby. Yeah, I'm hyped on it. Woo. Thank you so much for joining us at the Excellent Show. We are your host, and a lot goes into this podcast. We have an actual Patreon that we just set up. The link is in the description. We have a lot of things that we have to pay for. I'd really like to get a pair of Crocs. Parker has backed child support for months. Uh, you're just going to tell the whole world. In all seriousness, guys, we have two awesome tiers. The first tier we have is called support the pod and that's five bucks it's a cup of coffee but that would really help us out with the show and what we're going to do as a bonus we're going to put your name at the end of the pod as a thank you for all of your support now if you guys want to get more involved tier two is for you it's going to contain exclusive content and producer videos Ooh. Ooh, all, is, access. This is all, all access. All access tiers. We're bringing you backstage with us. You got that all access wristband. Thank you guys in advance for watching and all of your support. Now let's get you back into the pod. Oh man, let's talk about music. Music. And this album. And this album. Existential dance music? Existential dance music. September 14th. It should be out now. 15th. 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 Just 15th. kidding. Well, either way, it's out. And can I just say that, like, for me as a producer, like, one little thing I want to like this is what we like we open up we we do tutorials all the time we do remakes and stuff it is so nice to have a producer be able to open up a project file and share their work with people so really really appreciate you doing that thank you so much ask me anything I'll I'll share I'll share the secrets because you know no one's gonna sound like this okay so this is the closing track of the album called a moment of truth and this is kind of the track where you know, there, there's kind of a theme in the album, like 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 I said, it's about finding yourself. My friend Lizzie did the did the vocals for it. The, I don't want to show the whole first poem because I want you to listen to the album and get to that point. Yep. Right. You know, so I cool. want to dive into the build up and the drop. So as far as like sound design goes, wise, are you are are you pretty much creating a lot of these these sounds? Uh, from from scratch as far yes. as like maybe your chords or Everything. like Everything. so you never rarely you rarely or ever use a preset to start and then manipulate never wow never uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll play I'll play this first part please and you'll see how how layered it is there's just a lot of I realize a lot of pr people don't produce like this um, but I every sound has a story and every sound is shaped for it to sound exactly like right in my mind mm -hmm. in my mind okay so a truth deep down inside
so cool. Oh, love it. I oh, love that. That's the first drop I do. Beautiful. Like the ARP. Can't describe. This is the second. This is another drop. The feeling you can't describe. Oh, hell yeah. This sounds really good with a sub. Yeah. yeah of course. No, I, I, I hear I, it. We hear it. Yeah, I want I want it to be really, really pretty, you know, really yeah. pretty, but still energetic banger. Still. Like, yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, I don't know. What, what do you guys want to go? The guitars yes. are just so like okay. lush. There's something with, with 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 writing guitar, like from my experience, and especially using things like delay, that thing like people like, you know, I would say like the Edge from U2 has the ability to just use a delay pedal and create these sort of emotions, or just like we were talking about, like the angels and airwaves sort of Very adventure true. vibe. Yeah. Um, and I'm just, I'm just want to know about just the guitar, the, the writing, how you, how you layered them and any sort of processing that you did. Cause they're, yeah. they're beautiful. The beginning has just such a great, let's listen. Yeah. It's terribly played, but I kept it in. <laughs> the tone is what's, Octave on the right side. Wow. Really clear tone. Just Very like a, clean. The space is what makes it so yeah. emotional. Yep. And I think what I did was, uh, I'm not sure, I think I layered it with, uh, oh, I layered it with a lot of chords. You'll hear it here. Mm. Yeah. With the little, yeah, yeah. That adds a lot. I, I like, I like, uh, People see guitar as a almost like a rock instrument, you know. Yeah. But I don't. I never saw guitar. Guitar is like such a nice texture. Um, I never saw it like as a rock and roll thing. It's right. more like a beautiful, uh, like sparkly kind right. of sound. You're using a lot of counter melodies. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> and that's creating the mood, which is. Yeah. And then with the bass underneath that. Ooh, the that's a wonderful sub or bass line, you know? Yeah. It's not a regular sub no, either. No, it's not what I'm saying. That's why it's very unique. Corrected myself to bass line. Wait a second. Yeah. What are you doing in that patch to make it? Wait, wait, are you Let's arpeggiating go. it? Like, that's insane. It's so cool. It's actually you, really simple. It's creative. So let me unfreeze it. Um, this is literally just a. Um. Oh, it did it to delete. Oh wait, no. Here, the automation's here. So it's that, filter okay. parameter one. Just that's it. That's all. Oh, it's okay. That's it. But with the high resonance. Oh, right, that's, that's what's the resonance creating the cool. sort of pitch yeah. sweep in it. Is it? It must be key tracked too. Oh, or no. Let me see. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm the fucking like nerd that's out. Just, with the sound just this. And shit. It's so simple. <laughs> I love it's so it. So simple. It's really simple. Sounds wonderful. And, but this is not the main sub, so I think I, I added another sub layer to it to um, to keep it tight in the low end. Oh, I don't know what that is. Did I do both? That's crazy. I didn't even... That sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. but it's not, and the know, mix is perfect. Because I wanted that drive in there, you know? Anyway, so many layers, right? But it still feels like one melody. Yeah, it's, 100%. It's, it's not too clouded. Oh, sorry, I can't. I can't talk. No, you can. You can. I know. I know. I know how it works. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So like, it's still a lot of stuff going on at, going on at the same time. But so there's a lot of stuff going on at the same time. But it doesn't sound like it. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds. The main thing is ding 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 ding. ding. But if I would mute those those counter guitars that you don't really hear, mm -hmm. or or it's more like a subconscious feeling. That yep. you, yeah. If I would mute them, 
It's a little bit empty. 100%. But bring him back. So with the and the drums, I spend a lot of time on this snare. I, I want to show that snare. It's just I love snare. Yes, dude. It's look such at those a layers. weird snare. Because normally it would go for like a doof, you know, like a yeah. dubstep <laughs> I, I I feel like a lot of DJs are gonna make a, an edit of this drop, but then add like a doof snare. Oh to yeah, it. like a punch snare. Yeah. Two hundred hertz hit yeah. snare. Yeah, just like, but I I felt like this splashy sound kind of really felt right yeah i like uh, how many layers you got in there four Whoa. five this is one. Oh, that's clean oh yeah this is like a trick like grab an 808 clap add distortion Ooh. after the reverb so it get like a really washy nice Ooh. oh that's fucking smart. that's wonderful It sounds more like a crowd clap. It sounds mm -hmm. more like stadium clap. Yeah. yeah. That's just an 808 clap, like a standard TR 808 clap. I mean, and it's all those. Yeah, but then, yeah. And then the. Oh, it's a lot of layers, but. Yeah. Holy crap. You have that, like that bell on top almost, right? Yeah, that's this one. Yeah. Um, Nice. I think that's one. Or no, I don't know. Yeah, it's the anyway, bottom. I just normally I'm kind of a minimalist, but this snare just had to be sure right, you know. Um, and then the bass is just really simple, a simple saw, uh, a square. <laughs> For bass, I prefer a square. Yeah, because the art harmonics is that mm -hmm. phasing at all? Is that part of the reason at all? Or like trying Actually, not to? Yeah. It just sounds fatter in the low end yeah but actually this is a saw surprisingly yeah normally i would do this uh, hmm. i see but for this one i didn't shit i gotta re-deliver the masters now just kidding yeah. <laughs> skrillex did it with yeah. uh did you hear oh, about yeah, that yeah 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 you want to hear the arp of course yeah, yeah dude please explain how you made it too i'm very curious about that so the arp is is uh, really just like a simple simple Oh, uh, okay. It's really just like go basing basing it off of feeling. Um super fast pace. Yeah. Those dissonant MIDI notes. The dissonant ones. Those yeah. those are the ones yeah. that really feel like it it adds so much emotion yeah. to the This is how I made it. That's so funny. Oh big part is the dimension expander, I love it. Ooh. It really works. Oh, man. So layer-wise, you have your ARP, and then you are, um, then you have your bass underneath in the drop uh, portion. And then... A little vocal. There, yeah, there's a vocal in there, too. Can you talk about that? Nice, nice find. And this is just a vocal I recorded in my MacBook uh, microphone. Really? This is your, this is your voice? Yeah, like, huh? That's what I do. And my notes, little things like that really help. Like if you, if I play it without, there's just so, some emotion in that vocal that it's it's not there when I when I mute it. Like mm -hmm. now it's muted. So, but when you add the vocal, it just Cry. it's like yeah, dude, it hurts more. You know, yeah. it, hurts. Yeah. it hurts more. Could you could you briefly go over uh, your master? It changes from time to time, but um, um, oh, so embarrassing! I have to end the smile on my master. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're That's Dutch. okay. It's okay. <laughs> Were you using it's it a on? Dutch? It's a that that yeah. yeah. Are they uh, Dutch, right? Yeah. yeah. Are they? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so 
I love this. Oh, sorry, I can't talk and play it. Same I love oh. this plugin. Ooh. I don't know. If, do you know about this plugin? No, I was. I've never seen this plugin before. I'm so yeah, curious. One of, my, one of my favorite soft clippers. It stays oh, clean or something. Yeah. It makes it really loud. Uh, I like that a lot. What are you shooting for in your loudness in your tracks when you're, since we're on the, the topic of mastering? It it's, it kind of became a joke. <laughs> Sometimes I send my. I use this one too. Yep. We all do. Oh, wait. No, this is not even. So what I do is I, I export this mm -hmm. and then I. Add it to another project, and I do my final limiting. So, but oh. I think this should be like, hey, minus five, y'all. Yeah. Beat that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, now it's now it's bad. Yeah, like I, you know, loudness. Look, we're in EDM, and I guess when you, it's not important. I know of it's not, not important. But I, th I feel like there's a certain energy to to limiting and and saturation and compression that you know I if it sounds bad I'm not doing it but if it if it's possible to get as loud as possible anyway the uh, really simple um, ozone uh, secret and the smile for a build up I used <laughs> um, and then then I love the the clipping yeah one and then an other limiter after. The limiter L2, um, that's it. Uh, so this is another track. I um, it's it's a uh, a song I did with Bipolar Sunshine. It's called Light Only. Amazing vocalist. Yeah, it's cool. But it's not a standard house track because I wanted it to fade into a different vibe, half of the song. So it's like oh. this part is like uplifting, and then I wanted to go to like a existential part, which happens now. Oh yeah. Don't drift away. Very existential melody. Yeah. Right? Very, very existential melody. And the second drop, it's like more like a. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And that thing, it's it's a, that was an ad lib. I was like, I just do some random stuff, and then he did that, and that became the hook. Huh. It's just love, funny. love when that happens. Yes. Yeah. Um, what are you what are you using for pianos? Labs. Oh, on this one. Oh, yeah. So let me, let, me, let me pull that up. Um, Spitfire, the free one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What? It's they insane. sound great if you haven't had any Spitfire stuff. They do sound good. What? That's what it looks like? Yeah. Oh, they're so good. Drop. It's really simple, to be honest. Yep. Really simple melody. Um. It's really, it's a really simple beat, actually. Um, but I, I like how it fades from the, from this. It, it goes back into the positive part again, like the, the uplifting part again. After, after, so like. 
and we're back. Energy, yeah. It's never faded. Hey. It's only changing over time. Light only, light only you could see. Don't drift away from me. Yeah, I, I like that idea of two songs. It's a one. journey. Yeah. I, I always find that uh, a big challenge when I'm writing to where there's a super dark section or like a dark aggressive mean section and then it opens up into a happy mm-hmm. section without it – with it making sense in my right. head. That's yeah. a really uh, – it's a challenge for me to do. And the funny thing is this ha- it happened by accident. The thing is it's, it's a different key. So it's, ah. it's, a, it's really – I don't know how it worked out but it's a different key. It's in the scale, maybe it's like the bridge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this, that's why it feels like it really resolves when it goes back to the original it's, key. It's there. A, yeah. There's a resolve there. Yeah. yeah. I got I gotta show this this uh, choir part. Never fading. Mm. It's only changing over time. Not even I we got more. Fading. Wow. It's only changing. Kind of cool. Is that you singing, or is that the like? How did you make the the choir? Is it just you doing yeah, all the so, harmonies and so stuff? So this is uh, bipolar sunshine. Oh, and I and I put them back in the room. Uh, just, oh. And this is me. Nice. And then my friend and Nicholas. Dude, that, that is so nice. Stacked up. Over time. Oh. <laughs> so that that top stack because I can't see it from this far away. What what is the panning situation yeah. on that top? Because you know, there's you could do even with two and two on each side. Um, they call and it, then there's they call the, it the terror choir. The terror choir. The terror choir. Nice. And um, the, there's the the magical three. You know, so it's just a feeling thing. So I pan I pan this. To the left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right. I think cool. just all left, 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 right, left, right. Yeah. Hmm. Did, um, just fun. Having fun. Did you make the entire track first before you brought in Bipolar Sunshine and, and your friends? Or are you like, because, and then are you, are, are you having to like take away stuff? Or are you, are you trying to be mindful that somebody's going to sing on it in the future? Like how does I that work? I just love writing with Bipolar Sunshine and, and the Nicholas. Um, mm-hmm. He, so... We set up the session and Bipolar Sunshine was like, I think like 10 minutes late. And he was like, hey guys, I was hearing this melody in my head. Um, so he came in and was like, check this out. What do you think of this? And this, this is what it, his idea was. Let me show it to you. <laughs> oh this is just him God. humming on his, on his, completely different, okay? Like a completely different idea. That's, that's what it sounds like. I'm a <laughs> Completely different song. Yeah. Yeah. But listen to that. Dun, 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 dun. So I was like, okay, cool. And then and I, I was like, I'm not really sure what to do with this. But then I looped this part. <laughs> Yo, yes. no way. And then we made the beat around it. And it was like. Just having fun. That's so. Just sick. having fun. Dude, the way that some songs start, man. Cool. Yeah. This by itself is a sick, like, just a sick part. Just those solo too, just sounds yeah. sick as fuck. So that's why I say. You- you know, you're not really in control, you know? Yeah. It's just like <laughs> yeah. Some, so true, man. And with some people, you, you have more chemistry than others. You know, 100%. Just, kind of covered everything. This is, this synth is again, again that, uh, that Yamaha synth that mm-hmm. I, that's my voice sampled into like the, the keyboard and then I'm playing it. You know? It sounds so cool for a little sounds thing. like. It almost sounds like there's like a little bit of a bit crusher on there or something. 
Oh, that, that's the that's the mic. Yeah, that's the a lo-fi mic. Lo-fi mic. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lo-fi mic. It's so cool. Yeah, and I, that's I, a natural. That's the natural like. That's the natural the sound that's of so it. So nice. And I, uh, there's another part where I use that. I need one of those now. Yeah. I'm going on Craigslist. You gotta get there before I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I'm a- I feel like we covered a lot. Yeah, dude, this is yeah, great. man, yeah. this was incredible. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Unless there's anything else you want to like show off, I think in the in the album, I feel like we got so much great stuff. Dude, man. this is amazing. Awesome. Uh, just listen to my album. That's I put a lot of love into that. A lot of a lot of uh, feelings and emotions are in that album. So definitely oh, go yeah. take a listen. We'll put a link, obviously, in the yep. description. Um, on Should- all platforms. Thank you so much, dude. Hey, thank, thank you all so much. So, yeah, so thank much. you, man. Please had, come back. I had a great time. Yes. Yeah. Just don't give me a knife. <laughs> 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 all right, guys. No promises. <laughs> yeah. That wraps up this episode of The Excellent Show. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with your friends. Make sure you go listen to San Holo's new album. Link is in the description. We already got to listen to a bunch of it. It's amazing. San, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. My name is Frank, a.k.a. Ranks. These guys are excellent sound. See you next time. Peace out. Yay!